Mr. Speaker, as I rise to make my presentation on the Appropriations Bill 2023, 2024, I want to first make mention of a very important individual from Denry South, my constituency. She is well known as Silai. She is to be, a funeral service will be on Friday afternoon. And I want to take time to express my sincere condolences to the family of the deceased. Also in my constituency, Mr. Speaker, there is a boat that left yesterday morning and has not returned. And three our officials are out there and I'm praying that they will get the guidance from God and hope to see them back to port very shortly. Mr. Speaker, it has been a very challenging year and I want to make special mention to my wife, and my daughter who is in the States now and I'm sure she's watching and to thank all those for the courage, support and strength to journey throughout this period as the Minister for Agriculture and the MP for Denry South. Mr. Speaker, preliminary estimates in the agricultural sector suggest that real value added in the sector expanded by 9.8% in 2022 after two consecutive years of contractions. This partial recovery, Mr. Speaker, was broad-based and included higher levels of output in all subsectors, including bananas, non-banana crops, livestock, and fishing. These outturns, Mr. Speaker, were consistent with improving, with improving demand following the relaxation of the COVID-19 protocols and the associated continued economic rebound, both domestically and regionally. Mr. Speaker, mitigating this performance will, as a result of several supply side factors which slowed growth, including higher cost of essential agricultural inputs due to prolonged supply chain disruptions and noticeable increases in prices. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, financing constraints and a continu continued decline in the number of active farmers, Mr. Speaker, particularly in the banana industry, tempered output gains in 2022. During the review period, while output of non-banana crops continued to be hampered by weather patterns, pest and disease, some farmers were drawn towards the production of short crops amidst the uncertainty, uncertainty surrounding banana exports to the UK. As a result, Mr. Speaker, the production of non-banana crops as measured by the combined volume of produce procured by hotels and supermarkets increased by 14.8% to 3,393 tons in 2022 compared to 2021, although still below the 2019 levels. This outturn, Mr. Speaker, was mostly influenced by continued recovery in hotel consumption by 75.2% to 794.8 tons, consistent with the upsurge in stay over arrivals in 2022 relative to 2021. Mr. Speaker, almost half of this increase was in fruits and tree crops, followed by non traditional vegetables. These hotel purchases generated $5.9 million in revenue, representing an increase of 
1.4% compared to 2021. Supermarket purchases, Mr. Speaker, also grew by 3.8% to 2,598.2 2 tons in 2022, valued at 12.5 million EC dollars. This was primarily due to increased purchases in non-traditional vegetables by 22.5%, offsetting decreases in traditional vegetables and roots and tubers. So Mr. Speaker, we have been very, doing very well in the agricultural sector, and I want to, to continue encouraging our farmers to continue to ensure that we, they produce at the scale and level that is required, Mr. Speaker, because as a country, Mr. Speaker, we have to be able to feed ourselves. Our food import bill continue to rise, and we must encourage our farmers to produce what we eat, or to grow what we eat, Mr. Speaker, and to eat what we grow. Total earnings from these purchases of other crops grew by 26.0% to $18.5 million in 2022, just under that in 2029. This improved revenue performance was partly due to higher selling prices influenced by an upward shift in production costs brought on by high global inflation. Hopefully this are we all, Mr. Speaker. Industry figure Podui Pli Fig Passe Delane Passe Epi Ça c'est un bon bagay pour secteur figla en cette ici et aussi nous wè production manger bagay ko da chine banane makambou et l'autre fruitage hausse par 9 pour 800 ça c'est 9.8% mr speaker et mon vle di c'est fama ça c'est un bon encouragement Moi, ça, je tout qu'à aller pour en situation côté, puis celle-là, puis ces bagages-là, nous besoin pour produire manger, car venir cher. Mais je suis content que nous avons toujours fait un grand effort pour produire manger à nos besoins et pour nous faire un effort pour mener des sons. Quand ils étaient mangés, nous avons nous ça produit ici, mais nous avons importé. Je me voulais beaucoup courage dans le gouvernement ça là, dans moi c'est pas tout là, gouvernement c'est une louche à les bas partis là, qui a continué pour bas aussi pour à au besoin pour nous continuer pour du pli. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> according to the Economic and Social Review, preliminary estimates suggest that real output in the livestock subsector expanded by 10.2% in 2022 after surpassing pre-COVID-19 levels last year due to rising demand within the domestic economy. Chicken and pork production recorded a combined increase of 24.4% to 3,288.2 tons in 2022, while egg production rose by 3.4%. Chicken Output increased by 17.2% to 2,667 tons in 2022, the highest levels registered to date. There was a not notable uptick in local demand from hotels and restaurants, as well as producers' efforts to satisfy the quota of 28.6% for domestic chicken output. Mr. Speaker, consistent with higher production levels and unit prices, revenues from chicken, chicken production increased by 31.8% to $36.5 million in 2022. Mr. Speaker, pork production rose by 69.4% to 620.5 tons 
which represents a doubling of output relative to 2019. This performance, Mr. Speaker, was principally attributed to rising local demand. Similarly, revenue from recorded pork sales went up by 3.5 million to $8.2 million in 2022. Mr. Speaker, as you can see, our local livestock production did extremely well in 2022. And that is a clear indication of the strategic direction of the ministry and the government to meet our food security needs. Si ou pas ça produit assez manger pour nous ça manger en cette ici, ça means nous ne pour continuer importer. Et puis là nous continuer importer manger nous ça produit cette ici. Fama pa ka faire l'argent. L'argent c'est mon en commune en rural communities là pa ka y men en faire la vie fama en primaire. Et moi voulais encourager ces fama encore pour continuer à comprendre en chaise ces bagages-là qui sont en industrie agricole actuellement. Ce n'est pas faute du gouvernement, ça là. C'est là en chaise situation du gouvernement, pas ça changé. Nous n'y sommes pas créer climate change. Ça, c'est un bagage nous, nous ne sommes pas qui tient qu'il est venu pour un bout. Ou encore en Ukraine et puis en Russie, ce n'est pas nous qui mettons. Ce qui est là, là, il est le gouvernement n'est pas gardé, qui m'a dit nous ça, rien dans le soulagement. Et c'est pour ça, je veux dire, continuez à faire ton travail là où vous avez fait. Continuez à travailler pour faire la vie simplicien plus meilleure. Parce que nous savons où ça produit meilleur. Nous savons où ça produit. Et puis, je veux encourager ces femmes pour continuer à faire ça où vous avez Pour continuer à mettre à manger dans nous qui produit en bouche simplicien. Mr. Speaker, on another note, the importation of meats accounts for a significant percentage of the nation's food import bill. In 2022, Mr. Speaker, the total food import bill was valued at $486 million, whilst the total import of meats total 95 million representing a 19.5 percent increase there has been a consistent rise in the volume and value of meat imports throughout the years and this trend is expected to increase unless unless mr speaker specific measures are implemented to reverse this therefore the policy measure of continued focus on development on the development of the livestock sector through the full establishment of the volet agricultural station seeks to address that problem mr speaker mr speaker as part of efforts to reducing the high food import bill and assuring <coughs> food security for our people, attention has been focused on the livestock, livestock sector to harness the tremendous potential for expansion and thereby satisfying consumer demands for local produced meats while fostering national food and nutrition security, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the establishment of the Volet Agricultural Station seeks to reduce meat imports, reduce the food import bill, develop the local livestock industry, Mr. Speaker, and strengthen our food security. Moi, je l'ai dit, en tout effort nous avons fait pour produire ça nous, pour manger ça nous avons produit ici, moi, tout un conseil that l'année en chai va vienne nous ka importer en saint lucie donc moi ka croire dat ça c'est un bagaille dat nous ni pour faire en manière pour mener en ça descend et puis au monde qui savent volet agricultural station ça c'est station qui établi en mikou 
that gouvernement et ministère a fait un effort pour mener programme en place pour garder qui mange nous ça fait plus en ces femmes qui vole vers livestock pour produire plus et pour nous ça mener des sons quand ils viennent nous ramener en pays là the volatile livestock agriculture the volatile agricultural station mr speaker is being positioned to provide the required quality and quantities of breeding stock to facilitate increased production and productivity necessary for optimization and competitive competitiveness mr speaker the station will engage in the transfer of technology to livestock farmers and will be the main center for provision of livestock services to the sector. Major pro programs, Mr. Speaker, to be established at the, at the Volet Agricultural Station include one, establishment of a national breeding program which will be initiated with an immediate infusion of improved blood lines of swine, sheep, and goats through the importation of purebred animals. So, nous avons travail pour mener les animaux comme cochons, comme moutons et cabrit. Ça, c'est les animaux qui ont produit l'autre animaux et nous avons fait ces animaux ça avaler pour les gens qui ont livestock, pour faire un effort pour nous increase livestock production in St. Lucie. Farmers will then be afforded the opportunity to acquire high quality breeding stock at an affordable price and in a sustainable manner. Mr. Speaker, the cattle sector will receive support through a national artificial insemination program. The establishment of an artificial insemination laboratory lab, lab mr speaker sorry at the follet agricultural station to further stop, support the national artificial insemination program will be in place and mr speaker eligible farmers can also benefit from a stud service at the station mr speaker the facilities over 95 percent complete and will be ready to receive livestock and personnel by the end of May 2023. With these new interventions, Mr. Speaker, in the sector, it is anticipated that the population of ruminants and swine will increase by at least 10% within three years and grow incrementally each year as production indicators improve. Mr. Speaker, funding to undertake these transformational activities is being sought under the critical response window of the unleashing of the Blue Economy Project financed by the World Bank. We are very optimistic, Mr. Speaker, that the final approval for the initiation of the project will be communicated within the next few months. Mr. Speaker, let me go to the banana industry. Mr. Speaker, we continue to invest in the banana industry as an economic driver in the economy. In the Economic and Social Review 2022, page 26, paragraph 1, it is noted, and I quote, the banana industry faced a myriad of challenges on both the supply and demand side. Mr. Speaker, the main supply side factors included the rising cost of inputs such as fertilizers, fuel, and packaging materials associated with COVID-19 related supply chain disruptions, as well as the global economic recovery and the war in Ukraine. Mr. Speaker, the Economic and Social Review 2022 also indicated 
on page 26, paragraph 1, and I quote, The elevation in these prices adversely affected farmers' ability to attend to banana fields and apply the required inputs at recommended time periods. So, Nukadi, that industry figure, Magwe nous savi important, mais ces farmers qui ont figure aller through a period qui pas bon, et ça c'est because puis sel la mouté, puis gas mouté, puis madame, c'est carton, et bien c'est boîte la côté, ces farmers qui ont mis des figures la mouté. Covid la affecté la um, production pharma et puis war en Ukraine. Et nous avons dit que pour la pharma, c'est pour qu'il y ait une figure, il n'y a pas de ça parce que la production, la cost of production, Mr. Speaker, increased. And as a result, the return to the farmer in terms of an income would obviously have to be a lot less. The major demand factor experienced by the industry was related to access issues to the UK market on account of shipping costs, food quality concerns, and volume. Mr. Speaker, despite these setbacks, available data from the Economic and Social Review suggests that banana production expanded by 11.3% to 6,596 tons in 2022. While domestic sales recovered by 9.8% or 142 tons, total banana exports began to rebound from consecutive years of decline, expanding by 11.7% relative to its lowest level in 2021 to 5,118 tons. This was principally due, Mr. Speaker, to a 58.2% increase in regional sales from 2,913 tons in 2021, which overshadowed the marked drop in banana exports to the UK. Mr. Speaker, despite this growth in banana volumes, revenue generated from total exports fell by 0.8 million to 5.3 million in 2022 owing to the lower unit price received from the regional market. Obviously, Mr. Speaker, the regional market offers a much lower price to the UK market. And as a result of the, this, Mr. Speaker, there was a shortfall of 0.8 million. Mr. Speaker, available data, data show that the volume of banana exports to Caribbean countries expanded by 1,696 tons to four 1,610 tons in 2022. This performance, Mr. Speaker, of the regional market benefited from the diversion of bananas typically consigned to the UK to neighboring countries. The most pronounced increase was recorded in exports to Barbados, which rose from 925 tons in 2021 to 1,919 tons. Notable, Mr. Speaker, growth in exports were also recorded for Trinidad and Tobago and Antigua and Barbuda, which expanded by 93.9% to 1,272 tons and 23.7% to 1,188 tons, respectively. These developments, Mr. Speaker, reflected the continued efforts by the National Fair Trade and the government of St. Lucia to maintain and explore export opportunities within the region. However, there was a decrease of 139.5 tons in banana exports to St. Kitts and Nevis. Very concerning, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the overall performance in the banana industry in 2022 was a substantial decline of 69.6% in exports to the United Kingdom, which brought the total tons down to fa only 505, Mr. Speaker. Export to the UK recommends in May 2022, Mr. Speaker, but then it was temporarily discontinued in October 2022. 
This suspension, Mr. Speaker, was partly on account of the substantial rise in shipping costs and other issues regarding ripening facilities which adversely affected the viability of the banana trade. Mr. Speaker, moreover, the decline in plant health due to the infrequent application of fertilizers led to food quality concerns by UK supermarket buyers. Reduced confidence due to uncertainty surrounding this market contributed to a reduction in the number of, of farmers involved in exporting bananas to the UK. As a result of the weak export performance, there was a corresponding decline in UK banana exports revenue by 68.6% to 1 million in 2022. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> available data from the Economic and Social Review 2022, page 27, free showed that, and I quote, the combined domestic banana purchases by supermarkets and hotels increased from 1,335 45 tons to 1,478 tons in 2022, led by a sizable growth in hotel sales. And Mr. Speaker, you recall last year when our Prime Minister encouraged our locals to consume bananas, Mr. Speaker, some sectors, some sections of the populace, Mr. Speaker, tried to ridicule him. But we have seen a drastic improvement, Mr. Speaker, from the time that call was made in local consumption of our bananas. <clears throat> and I want to appeal to our populace, Mr. Speaker, to continue making a banana part of your diet on a day-to-day. Mirroring the ongoing recovery in stay over tourism, the quantity of bananas sold to hotels rose, rose by 64.3% to 180 tons in 2022, remaining 25.4% below 2019 levels. After declining in the previous two years, Mr. Speaker, supermarket purchases of bananas also increased in 2022 by 5.0% to 1,200. 97 tons, generating $2.7 million in revenue. <coughs> Although if hotel sales revenue amounting to $0.5 million from these domestic banana sales rose by 10.6% to $3.2 million in 2022. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this government has sought to arrest the decline in production and productivity of the banana industry by engaging in a series of initiatives. More specifically, to combat the high cost of production, efforts at resuscitating the banana industry recently included a total of 9,000 bags of fertilizer, fertilizer given to active banana farmers at a subsidy of 30%. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, 9,000 bags of fertilizer, Mr. Speaker, given to our banana farmers. Mr. Speaker, I want to inform our banana farmers our planting farmers, our vegetable farmers, that our government is concerned about the challenges that they faced, and we are making our efforts once funding or revenue allows it for us to continue to provide that level of support to our farmers. Mr. Speaker, the intervention was mainly driven by the alarmingly high increase in the cost of fertilizer in 2020, where a 115% increase was experienced on the 50 kg bag of fertilizer and 110% increase on the 25 kg bag of fertilizer. This initiative, Mr. Speaker, approved by the Cabinet of Ministers, took place during the following period, September 13th to December 21st and January 10th to March 2023. Mauvais dit that gouvernement by ebe wede fama epi 9000 sac sel ek sa commencé en septembre l'année passée ek nou kontinye en janvier l'année sa la nou sav fi glase an bagay ki epontan epi si fi gla pa ka en nuiti nou pa ka sa en 
production nous qu'on regarde avec qualité là avec moi voulez dire fama fig fama banane fama légime le gouvernement a continué à produire. Pour garder qui m'a nous ça, il y a support. Pour que qui dans nous ait une production de nous pour ensurer que nous avons une régional market, là, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we came into office, a few months after, we saw the closure of the BPIP in March 2022, Mr. Speaker. And immediately, Mr. Speaker, my government, my ministry, established a banana management unit. And this unit was specifically established to address the black Sikatoka problem that um, in the banana industry, Mr. Speaker. And we have black Sikatoka, we have a spot la. If we don't manage it, we have always a problem to have a quality fig. And Mr. Speaker, in the 2022-2023 budget, a total of 950,000 was allocated to this unit to address the banana and um, black sequel problem. This year, Mr. Speaker, well, last year, Mr. Speaker, 2022, we provided support to our farmers in terms of mineral oil and fungicides. No buy farmer, um, Louis Lafree. Et puis nous croyons que c'est un bon bagage pour aider les produits de qualité de la nouvelle. Mr. Speaker, this year, we got an allocation of $1 million to support the banana unit. And as a result, Mr. Speaker, it has given us an opportunity to, opportunity, sorry, to increase our staff by three more. We are going to put or encourage more of the staff to spend more time in the field, Mr. Speaker, to engage our farmers, to advise our farmers, to provide the technical support our farmers need to ensure that we maintain the quality and production level <clears throat> in the region. Mr. Speaker, in terms of, of our food and nutrition security policy, Mr. Speaker, our ministry has put together a draft food and nutrition security policy and action plan, and that is hoped we hope Mr. Speaker will help us address our food security concerns because Mr. Speaker, CARICOM has established the 25 by 25, which really represents reduction of our food import bill by, 2020, by 25% in 2025. I'm hoping that St. Lucia will be part of this plan in helping to meet this target established by CARICOM. Mr. Speaker, that takes me to fisheries, the fisheries sector, Mr. Speaker. Another sector that is very, very important in terms of our food, nutrition, and security, Mr. Speaker. The fisheries subsector continues to play a major role in our food and nutrition security strategy. Despite the rise in the domestic retail price of fuel occasioned by higher imported prices, which contributed to a 0.6% reduction in fishing trips to 27, there was an overall positive outturn in the fishing subsector in 2022. Available data for 2022, Mr. Speaker, showed that an aggregate volume of wild marine capture rose by 4.3% to 1,442 tons following growth of 8.9% in 2021. The estimated fishing efforts, tons per trip continued on an upward, upward trend, expanding by 8.6% in 2022. The landings of wild marine capture increased for the majority of species in 2022. Contributing to this output level was the increase in landings for other species, <coughs> which rose from 700 tons in 2021 to 746.9 tons in 2022. Increases were also recorded in the highly demanded dolphin and tuna species, Mr. Speaker, which rose by 4.4% and 2.2% respectively. The positive outcome from was influenced by an improvement in the climatic conditions coupled 
with a reduction in the amount of sargassum seaweed in the ocean. The combined value of landings, landings of wild marine capture grew by 17.9% to $26.1 million in 2022 due to the higher volumes and unit prices. The selling price of fish <clears throat> was raised in response to the increase in inputs costs, particularly fuel. And Mr. Speaker, when I heard the announcement that our fishers, registered fishers, <clears throat> will be getting, <clears throat> sorry, Mr. Speaker, rebate of one dollar, Mr. Speaker, that night I felt very good, Mr. Speaker, and up to now I am feeling that level of happiness and the benefits to be derived by our fishers. Mr. Speaker, the government of St. Lucia has contracted Digicel St. Lucia Limited to supply 300 marine satellite tracking units for fishing vessels to provide tracking services for our fishers. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the installation of these devices have begun, and so far we have installed 52 of these devices on vessels in Viewfort and Savans Bay. We will continue efforts, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we cover all fishing, fisheries communities, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that all our registered vessels are equipped with this device. I would say that the government has sent me 300 devices to the place where we are. There is no one who is in the sea. We have to go to the system and we have to go and locate exactly where we are. La tenant incident côté empêcher pet la vie semaine passée. Et puis si nous tenir il tenir device ça là en lait qu'on autre lit puis tête il était échappé la vie était échappé. On veut encourager tout pêcheur en gros îlet en dénui en vieux fort en slawé souffrir tout partout pour point opportunité ça là pour mettre device ça là en lait qu'on autre. Because là où fait ça Si un yon y vaut la mer, nous kaye sa en manière pour informer cause gade la location et kaye fait plieze ba yo pour yo sa loke tou ek pitet menon a te san ou ni pou nage et be ba yon kon sa. Mi la ni yon konot den mi konon ka pale an konon yon konstitu yon si mwen ki ka manche fom depye ek si yo teni divay sa le yo an le bot la pitet nou de kaye sa Hena manye pou loket yo. So mou ka kouye an se peche ya. Se sa ki pi tet ka di yo pa vle moun sa fko ouye. La me pa ni bwanch. La me pa ni bwanch. Ou pa jeme sa v joua le ou ka en kou a dan difikilte ek se di vay sa la ki ka ishape ou. Mr. Speaker, the FAD program, Mr. Speaker, is continuing, Mr. Speaker, and so far we have given FAD material to the fishers in Soufre, Viewfort, and then we, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to the allocation made by our Prime Minister for another six FADs, Mr. Speaker, that would be given to Grozile, to Ancillary, Canaries, Miku, Mr. Speaker, and we are hoping that these fads, Mr. Speaker, will provide an opportunity for our farmers to reduce on the cost in terms of fuel, but we will we'll be able to sail out at sea and be able to continue to earn a, level, a living from fishing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move now to the cocoa and seamoss subsector, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as mentioned in the appropriations bill by the Prime Minister, value added for cocoa and CMOS, Mr. Speaker, is very, very vital and important for the development of our economy, Mr. Speaker, and more significantly for the impact, the livelihood, and income generating activity for the rural communities. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, an allocation of $1.4 million was made available to my ministry 
to produce, to enhance the cocoa sector, Mr. Speaker, and to give support to our cocoa farmers by provision of fertilizer, provision of plant planting material, Mr. Speaker, and general rehabilitation of existing plantations. Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping that we will be able to provide those planting material as soon as possible to farmers. And so far, all efforts are being made for us to make this happen and to ensure our farmers can benefit from that. Mr. Speaker, I now turn to the renovation of the apiculture subsector, which has been ongoing in St. Lucia since 2012, led by the Global Environmental Facility Small Grants Program, which is implemented by the United Nations Development Program, Jeff Small Grants, UNDP, with contributions and in partnership with the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, the Japanese, Japanese International Cooperation Agency, the Ayanola Apiculture Collective, under the supervision of my ministry. I am pleased, therefore, to report that because of the significant strides made in St. Lucia in the science of apiculture in the last 10 years, Mr. Speaker, our country is slowly emerging as a center of excellence for apiculture in the Eastern Caribbean. As part of the evolution of this subsector, Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia will be convening the Council of Ministers of Agriculture of the OECS this year, tentatively scheduled for the end of October and November. This meeting of my colleague ministers, Mr. Speaker, has been made possible through the convening powers of the OECS Secretariat and the technical and financial power of the Jeffs Small Grants, UNDP, ICA, FAO and other agencies, Mr. Speaker, the Jeff Small Grants will contribute in excess of 68,000 US dollars, Mr. Speaker, to rep representing 49.25% of the budget, with commitments from the, part the other partners to cover the remaining 50.25%. The purpose of that meeting, Mr. Speaker, is to present to the ministers a modern policy for apiculture in the OECS, along with a two-year work plan for approval. Like many other Caribbean, like many other primary crops produced in the history of the Caribbean, there are external threats, Mr. Speaker, looming on the horizon, which, if unchecked and managed, could pose existential threats to the industry. One such threat, threat Mr. Speaker, one such threat, Mr. Speaker, is the increasing export of fake honey globally. Mr. Speaker, fake export of honey, Mr. Speaker. Si nous n'y a pas de qui bon, nous n'y pouvons continuer à produire des choses qui sont bonnes. Là où nous pouvons mettre l'autre chose en Sioua, ça ne peut pas arriver à nous. Si nous n'y a pas de qui sont en position, et nous ne pouvons pas les acheter. Les ça fait, moun se moun na ka produit si wa pa kai sa hen l'argent. So Mr. Speaker, I want to call on our honey producers to continue to produce a top quality product, Mr. Speaker. We are just like Simos, Mr. Speaker. I had the opportunity to provide through Export St. Lucia last week, Mr. Speaker, 60 drying tables for the Simos, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, we understand the importance of that subsector. Our CMOS is one of the best in St. Lucia. And we, in the world, Mr. Speaker, sorry, in the world, Mr. Speaker, thank you, colleagues. The, in the world, Mr. Speaker, one of the best in the world. And, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> and we must ensure that we continue to maintain that standard, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there has been tremendous focus on the raw material, Mr. Speaker, but value added is critically important. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I see my time is getting close, and I just want to mention under the Seven Crops Program, Mr. Speaker, we supported farmers in this first quarter of 2023 by making available 122 seedlings at a cost of 20 cents per seedlings, Mr. Speaker, to our farmers as a way of giving support for our food security. 5,000 
25,000 tomato seedlings, Mr. Speaker, was, was made available, 14,000 cabbage, 12,800 lettuce, 17,000 bell peppers, Mr. Speaker, 29,000 watermelon seedlings, 13,000 honeydew seedlings, Mr. Speaker, 10,470 cantaloupes. So, Mr. Speaker, in an effort to reduce our food import bill, Mr. Speaker, we are making that available. Mr. Speaker, on the um, seven crops program, Mr. Speaker, we made available to our farmers 16 green, um, hoop greenhouses, 252 rolls of drip lines at $450 per drip line, Mr. Speaker, 609 bags of pit moss, 500 plus bags of fertilizer at a cost of $50 per, per bag, Mr. Speaker. And we continue to give the support to the farmers to ensure that we can relieve them of the challenges that they face and to encourage them to continue to produce. Under that program, Mr. Speaker, we also did training in composting, crop varietal trials, mechanization, irrigation, agro-processing, farm app and management, mushrooms, and so on, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the ministry has been undertaking a number of projects, Mr. Speaker, and I do not have the time to be able to highlight all of them at this time. But I want to go to a very special agency, Mr. Speaker, that I worked for 44 years be before becoming a politician. And that is Forest and Lands Department, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, um, I must mention that we have um, a project in the Sufra watershed, Mr. Speaker. It's called the IW Co project, funded by the Jeff in a tune of 729,685 US dollars, Mr. Speaker. The project aims to address the problems of land and ecosystem degradation in the upper reaches of the Sufre watershed. Mr. Speaker, to date, 120 farmers have had re rehabilitation work done on the farms, totaling 25 hectares of farmland. So far, we've established a community nursery to provide planting mat materials to our farmers. The Fonce Jacques, the Forestry Division has been working very closely with the Fonce Jacques Development Committee, Mr. Speaker, in terms of management of an agro-tourism park. And Mr. Speaker, I just got some information this morning, Mr. Speaker, having completed an MOU between the government of St. Lucia and the Fonce Jacques Development Committee, Mr. Speaker, that <coughs> A tune in the, um, an amount of 126,000 US dollars was given to, was made available to the Fonce Jacques Development Committee by the Jeff, Mr. Speaker, and another 1,170,000 1, Mr. Speaker, EC, was also made available to the committee. We are hoping that the Fonce Jacques Development Committee will make very good use of these funds, Mr. Speaker, and to make that transformation that is needed in the Fonce Jacques watershed. Mr. Speaker, there is also a riverbank project funded by the FAO, Mr. Speaker, to the tune of $293,000. And it is really aimed at rehabilitation of our riverbanks. Mr. Speaker, we still see farmers and other residents, Mr. Speaker, removing unnecessary, indiscriminate vegetation along our rivers, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have 37 rivers on the island, Mr. Speaker, and we must remember that we do not depend, we do not get underground water, Mr. Speaker. Our water is surface water, Mr. Speaker. And I want to appeal to our farmers and other residents that we must continue to protect the banks of our rivers, Mr. Speaker. Asu, se mouna ki ni jardin yo pwe la ouvye ya. Se mouna ki kwe, yo sa ale e koupe bwa ale la ouvye nou. Nou ka fe an bagay ki pa bon bigez le sa fet, nou ka detwi bank la ouvye ya. Ek sa nou ka yen se afalay, ek lot bagay ka desen la ouvye ya. Ek nou pa kay sa sevi. Nou bou zen pou irrigation, nou bou zen pou bwe. Ek nou ni an organizasyon ki ka bon nou la jan, if you have done it in Aslawe, that is the Conrad River, Mr. Speaker, the Ansley River, Mr. Speaker, and I call on my 
the member for Ancillary can reach, Mr. Speaker, to continue educating and sensitizing his constituents, Mr. Speaker, on the value and importance of protecting Member for Denry South, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we also have a soils project where nine countries are involved, and it is um, a project in a tune of 8.1 million US dollars, Mr. Speaker. And the main aim of the original project is to strengthen Caribbean small island developing states with the necessary tools for adopting policies, measures, and reforming legal and institutional frameworks to achieve land degradation and neutrality. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia is one of those projects, and we are hoping that we can update our soils database. Our soils map was established one year after I was born, that was 1996, Mr. Speaker. And 1966, sorry. <laughs> 1966, Mr. Speaker. And because of numerous events that have taken place, there is an urgent need for us to reassess and to be able to get most um, um, new soils information that would help us in terms of meeting our land, land degradation and neutrality needs on the goal 15, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have 10 minutes left and I would not be happy to end my presentation without going to my constituency, Mr. Speaker. And I want to take time to say a big thank you to my constituents of Denry South for vesting their confidence and trusting me as the MP. Mr. Speaker, we know the flooding in, in the village continues, Mr. Speaker, and just Sunday, after an hour and 15 minutes of consistent rain, Mr. Speaker, there was some flooding in the constituency. I know people like Lauren and Lena and the Rydons and people like Zia, Mr. Speaker, they have always been concerned about that, Mr. Speaker, and we are working towards ensuring that we can um, relieve them of that pressure, Mr. Speaker. In terms of the upgrade to the Saturday Night Fishing Fiesta, Mr. Speaker, it is an activity that was established in 1999. And Mr. Speaker, the spin-off effect has been tremendous for our vendors, for our fishers, for our supermarket owners, Mr. Speaker. And I'm happy that under the Community Tourism Project, Mr. Speaker, a sum will be made available for us to upgrade the facility and to put it at the level that it should to ensure consistency and a standard that would encourage people to come in and participate and contribute towards the development of the constituency. The repairs to the fishing and um, fishery spot, Mr. Speaker, is ongoing. And I know, based on what was in the budget for 2023, we have to do some repairs to the fisheries facility. And my good friend from Mikunov, I want to guarantee him that from those funds, some level of support will be given to the fishers of Miku, as well as Viewfort, Grosile, Ancillary, and I'm hoping that we will be able to bring some relief to our fishers in terms of you know, providing the necessary infrastructure that they need to be able to continue their, um, their, their, their life at sea. Mr. Speaker, under the CDP projects, Mr. Speaker, we had a number of projects, infrastructural projects, Mr. Speaker, in Lakai, Lume, Denry, Mr. Speaker, and one of them, Mr. Speaker, is the refurbishment of the Lakai Daycare, Mr. Speaker. This, Mr. Speaker, had not, this facility or building, Mr. Speaker, had not received any level of attention for more than 15 years, Mr. Speaker. And now, if you walk by, Mr. Speaker, you will see a sparkling and well-upgraded and refurbished building which will make life life more comfortable for our students and kids. Mr. Speaker, in terms of the Denry football field, I am hoping that my discussion with the member for Grosily will come to a reality, Mr. Speaker, and we will provide sitting accommodation for persons who come to the playing field to watch cricket and um, football cricket, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the housing assistance in Denry South will continue, and I'm hoping that when our next allocation is made available, Nukai, and I was told next week, Nukai Kote, <laughs> we will continue to provide. <laughs> 
to provide support to our um, um, constituents, Mr. Speaker. We will continue to provide the educational support, the burial assistance, Mr. Speaker, under our ZINAM, under the, our CDP. And Mr. Speaker, I want to say a big thank you to my government and the cabinet, because the flow bundle is doing very well in our constituency, Mr. Speaker. A number of persons have been connected now, although it's, uh, it was slow in recent months, Mr. Speaker, but the flow bundle is really, really a tremendous help and support to our needy persons in the community. And we are hoping that this program will continue so our children, our single mothers, our unemployed mothers, Mr. Speaker. And I want to take the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to thank Flo in a big way for the support to our government and people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I want to say a big thank you to my cabinet of ministers for the support. And I know this support will continue, Mr. Speaker, because the agricultural sector is big and very, very critical to us in terms of meeting our food security. I want to thank my PS, my deputy PS, and staff of my ministry for the hard work, Mr. Speaker. But I also want to take time to say, in spite of the hard work, I want, I want to appeal to them, Mr. Speaker, that there is a lot we can do. Let's come together and implement our projects in a much um, um, quicker way or, fast, or, or much, much faster, Mr. Speaker, so we can achieve a lot more at the end of the day. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my constituents. I want to thank my council, Mr. Speaker. My, all the stakeholders, the banana farmers, Mr. Speaker, the vegetable farmers, Mr. Speaker, the fishers, Mr. Speaker, the livestock farmers, and everyone in the sector, Mr. Speaker, to understand that we are going through challenges, but whatever our government can do, whatever our government, our cabinet can do, we will continue to provide the support that is needed to ensure that our food security is on par and we can do continue to survive by growing what we eat and eating what we grow. Mr. Speaker, thanks for giving me that opportunity to address um, my ministry and my constituents, constituency, Mr. Speaker, and I want to wish my other colleagues the best for the debate of the appropriations bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks.